Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the Mechanics M1 January 2023 International A-Level exam. This question here is about momentum and impulse. And we're told here about two particles A and B which are moving in a straight line in opposite directions towards each other on a smooth horizontal surface when they, they collide directly. Particle A has a mass of 3 m kilograms, and particle B has a mass m kilograms. Immediately before the collision, both particles have a speed of 1.5 meters per second. That's the speed. Immediately after the collision, the direction of motion of A is unchanged, and the difference between the speed of A and B is 1 meters per second. So we got to first find the speed of A immediately after the collision, and then the speed of B immediately after the collision, five marks. So let's first make a little diagram. As we know in mechanics, it's always good to draw a clear diagram to illustrate what's happening. So we have two particles, A and B. So I'll draw a circle to represent A, and another circle to represent B. Okay, so um, A has, so that's A and that's B. I'll just put A here and B there. I could put them either way, either way around, it doesn't matter, but I'll put A here and B there, no problem. Now, we're told that the mass of A is 3m. So this is 3m kilograms, and the mass of B is m. So this is m kilograms. All right, so before, I'll put all the information about what's happening before the collision on top, and the information about what's happening after the collision underneath. So before the collision, they're moving towards each other, so we'll have A going at this direction, 1.5 meters per second, and B moving in this direction with a speed of 1.5 meters per second as well. They're both going at the same speed towards each other. All right? I didn't put any, I didn't associate any signs with this because I'm writing down their speed for now. And when I talk about their velocity in the equation, then I'm going to assign a you know, positive or negative to them depending on what I decide. Now, after the collision. The speed, the direction of motion of A is unchanged, so we know for sure it's going in this direction. Okay, and we want to find what it is, so let's call that V. Now, if the motion of A is unchanged, of course B has to have changed direction, because if A hits B and it continues moving in this direction, they've collided, B is obviously going to be moving off in this direction as well, and um, of course B is going to have to be going at a, a higher speed than A, because, you know, A is collided into B, right? If A is going faster than B, then it won't make sense, because then A and B, A will, you know, they're going on the same line, so they'll still be in contact, or, you know, A will be pushing B, whatever, no. So that means B must be the one which has a speed one kilometer, one meters per second more than A, okay? Because B must be going faster than A for this situation to occur, that they collide, and A continues going in the same direction, B must be going in the direction that A, A is going into, because it can't go in the opposite direction, because A is moving in this way, and it must be going faster than A. So it makes just a bit of common sense for you to realize that the, the difference between their speeds is one meter per second. B must be the one which has a higher speed than A. Okay? All right. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set up the equations from this. Now, I'm going to consider taking the right as positive. I'm going to consider taking the right as positive. Right? So, in this case, if we look at the, the conservation of momentum, now that's how we're going to work out what these values are. We're going to use the principle of the conservation of momentum. That the total momentum in a system before and after the collision will, will, will be the same. So, if I take the mass of A and its velocity, so 3m times 1.5, and I add to that the mass of B and its velocity before the collision, so that's m times, now as I'm taking right as positive, this is going to be minus 1.5. Okay, so this is the total momentum before the collision. It's equal to the total momentum after the collision, which is going to be 3 times m V plus, and this will be m times V plus 1. That equation now will help us find what V is, and V is the velocity of A, of course, and V plus 1 is the velocity of B. So 
for part one, we can, um, you know, solve this equation for V. So first of all, you notice that M is a con con factor of every term in both sides of the equation. So we can just divide both sides by M, they will cancel out. So you're left with three times 1.5, which is 4.5. And you have minus 1.5 is equal to, this is three V plus V plus one. So this gives you 4.5 minus 1.5 is three is equal to, this is going to give you 4v plus 1, subtract 1 from both sides, you have 2 equals 4v, and therefore we can say v is equal to, we say v is equal to 2 over 4, which is a half. So v is equal to a half meters per second, or 0 0.5 meters per second if you want. So that's the velocity of a, basically. So the, we can say the speed of a, the speed of a, is... Uh, a half meters per second. All right, they don't want the speed, that's fine. If you, even if it come out as negative, for example, we'd write it, the answer as a half because it's a speed that they're asking for. So that's part one. So we can work out part one from that. And also we can work out what part two is. Okay, we know that the speed of B is equal to V plus one. So it's a half plus one. So it's going to be three over two meters per second. So that's the speed of B and that's the speed of A and that's the answer to part A of this question. All right, then it says, uh, part B says, find in terms of M the magnitude of the impulse exerted on B on the collision. So we only want the magnitude of the impulse, not its direction. So if we consider B, it has a mass of M kilograms and its speed before the collision was in this direction, 1.5 meters per second and after the collision was 1.5 or three over two meters per second. Okay, I can use it as a decimal or a fraction. I'll just, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, let's call this uh, three over two meters per second in that direction. And after the collision, three over two meters per second in the other direction. So we can say the impulse is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. So here we have the final velocity, okay, and here we have the initial velocity. So in this case, the, the mass is m kilograms. Um, you have v is the final speed, which is in the positive direction, which is 3 over 2 meters per second. And u is in the direction that we're calling negative, which is minus 3 over 2 meters per second. second. Okay, so therefore we can say the impulse is equal to m times um, 3 over 2 minus minus 3 over 2. And so I is equal to M times, that's 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2, which is 6 over 2, which is 3M. 3, sorry. So that we can say the impulse, therefore, is equal to 3M Newton seconds. So there's the answer to part B, the impulse exerted on B. All right. If we had if we'd used A, we would have got the same answer. Our impulse would be negative, that's all. It would be acting in this direction. So we could have found, um, you know, the, the impulse exerted on, on A by, we know that this, this speed is 0 0.5 meters per second in the same direction. We could have found the impulse exerted on A, which, which would be its mass, which is 3m, times the change in velocity, the final velocity, which is acting in the positive direction, 0 0.5 minus, and then this is also acting in the positive direction, which is minus is 1.5. So you have 3m times minus 1, which is minus 3m. Of course, that is acting in this direction, the impulse here, because it's causing A to change its, to, to slow down. Okay, so that's why it's negative. And they would only want us for, they would only want us to give the, the magnitude of the impulse, so we'd, we'd give the same answer as 3. So we could use A or B to work out that impulse. In both cases, it will be, it will be 3M, magnitude of it. So, um, you know, you can use either of those. Here, no difference with which one you use, so I just used B. All right, so there's the answer to question number two. That completes this question. Other questions from this particular paper um, can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. If you... Um, at the end of the video, if you see at the end of the video the playlist appearing here, that will be all questions on M1 that I have answered dealing with the uh, topic of momentum and impulse. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. 
and the video link that will show here will tell you or show you how to use my channel to help you find um, things that you're looking for and help you to revise for your exams. Thank you for watching and see you soon.